Hello everyone, welcome to my new video in my Mathematics Essential series. In this video, I will continue proving trigonometric identities. In particular, I will prove identity number five on our list of 19 identities. Okay, and just like in the previous video, I will show you two proofs of this identity. One is more common, but the less common proof is quicker. So let's get to it. All right, I'll move past this proof from the last video. Okay, so let's write out the identity that we want to prove, and it's trigonometric identity five, which is that the cotangent of theta squared plus one is equal to the cosecant of theta squared. And just recall that the cosecant of theta is just the reciprocal of the sine function. So it's just one over the sine of theta. Okay, so the cosecant of theta squared would just be one over the sine of theta squared. Okay, let's begin the proof. And let's start on the left-hand side of the equation. So the cotangent of theta squared plus one is equal to, well, Cotangent is also a reciprocal trigonometric, trigonometric function. So the cotangent of theta is equal to, well, it's a reciprocal, it's the reciprocal of the tangent of theta, okay? But by definition, the tangent of theta is the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. So this is one over the sine of theta over the cosine of theta, but dividing by a fraction is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So it's equal to the cosine of theta over the sine of theta times one. Okay, so these are all these different ways that you can write the cotangent of theta, and we will write it like this in our proof, okay? So the cotangent of theta squared is equal to the cosine of theta over the sine of theta, all in brackets squared, which is the same thing as just squaring numerator and denominator, plus one, okay? Well, we can write one as the sine of theta squared divided by itself. And the benefit to doing this is that now we have common denominators. So we can write this all as one fraction and we have in the numerator the cosine of theta squared plus the sine of theta squared. I will move all of this out of the way. I'll just move it up here. Okay. Okay, and all of this is over the common denominator, which is the sine of theta squared. Now, the numerator is the Pythagorean identity. Remember, the Pythagorean identity says that uh, sine squared of theta plus cosine squared of theta is equal to one. So that numerator is one. Okay, we're just applying trigonometric identity number three to the numerator, and we've already proven that identity. Okay, but when I jog your memory about the cosecant of theta, I said it was one over the sine of theta. So we have it squared, which means we have exactly this expression. That's what we've derived. Okay, so one over the sine of theta squared just is the cosecant of theta squared, and that completes the proof. All right, here's an alternative proof. Okay, so by the Pythagorean identity, by the Pythagorean identity, we know that, okay, the sine of theta squared plus the cosine of theta squared is equal to one. Dividing through by the sine of theta squared obtains the following. Okay, dividing through on both sides by the sine of theta squared. Okay, we have sine of theta squared over itself plus the cosine of theta squared over the sine of theta squared. And on the right-hand side, 
we have one over the sine of theta squared. So this is a much quicker proof. So this term is one. This term by definition is cotangent of theta squared. And the right hand side is the cosecant of theta squared also by definition. So this completes the proof. Okay, and now uh, notice that in this other proof, the one that we have just done, all we did was we took the Pythagorean identity and we divided through by something. So really, this identity is the Pythagorean identity in disguise, just like trigonometric identity four is the Pythagorean identity in disguise because you can also prove that identity from the last video by writing the Pythagorean identity and dividing through on both sides by the cosine of theta squared. Okay, so that's two proofs for the one identity, trigonometric identity number five, which means we can go back to our list and cross it out. And in total, we have proven five identities, which means there are 14 to go. And just to make things clear, it is these two identities that are instances of the Pythagorean identity in disguise. Okay, when you divide through, all you're really doing is scaling a triangle that satisfies these properties. Okay, so... I think I'll leave the video there. In the next video, I'm not sure which ones I will prove. I think I will prove two out of these four. Maybe I'll do all four in one video. Anyways, uh, if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like or a share. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments. And if you would like a notification when I upload a new video, just subscribe to my channel. Until next time, bye for now.